Flanking is one of the most popular optional rules in D&D 5th edition and it's also the topic of great debate. Is it good? Is it bad? Who's to say? Well, I am and I'm going to explain to you why it belongs in the dumpster. Hello and welcome to Dungeon Mastery, the show where we master the art of dungeon mastering. Today we are talking about the ever divisive topic of flanking. Some people love flanking, other people hate it. I fall kind of somewhere in the middle, but I'm going to explain what I think anyways this adds to the game and also what it detracts from the game and then you can kind of make your own decision about whether you want to use it. Before we get into today's video, I want to make a couple things clear. For one, by no means am I completely infallible and is my opinion the perfect one. The bottom line when it comes to any of this kind of stuff is do whatever you and your players enjoy. But I will be making a case for why I don't think flanking has a place, at least in 5th edition. But I can't really get into all of that until we talk about exactly what flanking is. So, for the uninitiated, flanking in D&D is an optional rule, meaning that it's it's not baked into the core rules of the game, but it is included as something that you might want to throw into your game, and a lot of tables tend to use it. Specifically what it does is if you're playing on a grid, either on Roll20 or some other virtual tabletop, or using actual miniatures and playing in person, if you can get your miniature and your friend's miniature to be on either side of an opponent, meaning you draw a line straight through them, you have advantage on all melee attacks you make against the creature that's stuck in the middle. Something very important to understand here, which I often see misrepresented at game tables, is that you have to be able to draw a line straight through the opponent's square, meaning that line has to go either from corner to corner or from side to side. None of this kind of like cutting a third of the square when one person's on the top and the other person's on the right hand side, that does not count as flanking. The whole idea behind why flanking works and grants advantage is because it's very difficult to fend off melee attacks from someone when there's someone else directly behind you also trying to stab you in the back. So the rationale is there and I think the logic to that is sound, but I don't think it really serves the gameplay experience the way that we want it to. Say your party's going up a group of hobgoblins, a creature that's not necessarily a huge threat, but they're smart enough to know how basic combat tactics work. They're smart enough to know that if they can surround an opponent, it's going to be easier to stab them, i.e. they're smart enough to go after that flanking advantage. You can sometimes get this situation where your players will seek to flank them, and then the hobgoblin will run around behind that person to flank them, and then one of your players might move in behind them, and then a hobgoblin moves behind them, and you can see where this is going. You basically end up with a giant line of combatants where everyone's swinging with advantage, at which point it doesn't really matter anymore, and the combat just kind of devolves into like this silly advantage fishing conga line of flankage. I'll be the first to admit that the conga line example is a little bit of a straw man because, I mean, it's not like that happens every single time, and that's also a kind of situational example. The situation being if you have a party of multiple melee attackers and they're going up against a group of multiple melee attackers that are smart enough to utilize flanking. But in specific parties, that can be a problem, so it's worth mentioning. The second thing, which admittedly is a bit of personal preference, is that it normalizes advantage as something that should be happening. And this is problematic for a few reasons, because if you can get advantage from flanking, which is a very easy thing to do, suddenly whenever you're making an attack without that flanking bonus and you're not just getting advantage for free, it starts to feel kind of bad. It makes advantage feel like the norm and a regular attack feel like you're kind of wasting your time and disadvantage feel horrendous. I also think it disincentivizes creative tactics and play. And granted, this also depends on your DM, but if I can just move to a specific square and get advantage on my attack rolls, it makes me as a player less likely to try to pull some cool cinematic shit to try to get advantage, to be like, oh, I'm going to run up this rock and jump off to try to attack down on them. Sweet, lovable DM, do I get an advantage for that? And I mean, if your DM just doesn't grant advantage for anything like that, then yeah, that sucks. But as a DM, I think it's important to, you know, reward creativity and like if a player wants to try to do something that makes creative use of the environment to give them that advantage because, you know, it's fun. And I think that's a lot more interesting than just giving advantage for standing in a specific spot. It also sucks because if one of your players has a class which uses some type of class ability that grants advantage, it suddenly makes that class ability feel a lot less exciting and a lot less special 
because advantage is pretty commonplace anyway. For example, the Samurai Fighter's Fighting Spirit ability grants them advantage on all their attack rolls for the turn, utilizing their bonus action. When they use that Fighting Spirit, it should be awesome, and everyone at the table should be like, oh, that's so cool, but... It just kind of feels like, oh, couldn't get flanking, huh? And that's not the only ability. There are tons of different abilities across almost all of the melee classes that have different ways to get advantage that suddenly feels a little bit less exciting. Also on the topic of game balance, it cuts the other way too and completely overpowers and throws off some abilities. Like Great Weapon Master, if you can reliably get advantage, is so good. It's already one of the best feats in the game, but getting advantage for free like most of the time when you're attacking with Great Weapon Master is just disgusting. And in my opinion, it completely removes the drawback of that feat, which is what tries to keep it balanced, even though the drawbacks aren't even close to devastating enough for that feat to be unwarranted. The other thing you need to consider if you're going to use flanking in your game is it does cut both ways, so it's going to make your monsters so much more brutal. And while yes, I do believe that some monsters should not really take advantage of flanking unless the circumstances just kind of work out that way. Like if you're running combat using like a group of slimes or something, like they shouldn't be trying to take advantage of tactics to get advantage literally but i would argue the barrier for entry there is pretty low i mean you don't have to be very smart to recognize like oh when we both attack this thing from either side it's harder for them to deal with our attacks like any creature with an intelligence of like six or higher is gonna at least be able to understand that right i mean some animals understand that my biggest gripe however when it comes to flanking rules is it just slows down combat so much it just adds in something else that the players can take advantage of of, which again isn't necessarily a bad thing it's not about nerfing the players but it is very much about stopping the slow roll of combat at the table i mean combat already takes long enough as it is when you have players trying to figure out like oh can i get advantage if i move here can i get advantage if i move here it just slows things down even more. So why is flanking even included as an optional rule then if it doesn't seem to do much for us in terms of gameplay or mechanics or story? I think the reason for that is flanking used to be a thing that kind of comes to us from older versions of the game. Back in D&D 3.5, attacks of opportunity used to work a lot differently than they do now. You couldn't just run up to someone or be in melee with someone and then dance around them. In 5th edition, you only take an attack of opportunity if you leave a creature's threatened range. In 3rd edition, you used to take an attack of opportunity if you moved more than 5 feet within a creature's threatened range. Meaning, it was a lot harder to get flanking. You got a 5 foot step for free, but beyond that, you were risking an attack of opportunity to try to reach around and get behind someone. I ultimately think the changes that were made to 5th edition and how attacks of opportunity work are for the best, but I do also think that by including flanking, it's making getting that flanking bonus so easy that it will literally always be the most attractive option to your melee characters. So this gives us this weird result where we're disincentivizing creativity, we're disincentivizing tactics beyond flanking, and we're also disincentivizing taking certain classes and features based on what those classes give you for reasons beyond player interest. So that's kind of the logic behind why I personally don't use flanking in my games. But like I said at the very beginning of the video, if you and your group love using flanking, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But you might want to consider mixing things up a little bit. If I was going to run a game where my players absolutely wanted me to include flanking rules, I wouldn't necessarily say no. But I would consider maybe changing the way attacks of opportunity work and possibly reverting back to the way 3.5 used to do it just to kind of experiment with that. Or maybe there's some other rule change that I haven't considered that upon putting a lot more thought into it I might come up with. As always, do what makes you and your players happy. But I also think it's very important that as the DM we consider all of the rules that we're adding into our game, optional or otherwise, and exactly what purpose they serve and whether or not they are deserving of being a part of our game. And for me, flanking is just one of those optional rules that comes up a little bit short. But you tell me, if you like using flanking in your game, or maybe you hate it for a reason that I haven't mentioned, please leave a comment and let me know. 
I am always open to discussion. And who knows, maybe I'll come around on it if presented with an infallible adamantine airtight argument. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you have any topics that you would like me to discuss and cover based on dungeon mastering, let me know either on Discord, on Twitter, in the comments, Reddit, whatever. I will catch you guys next week with another hot take and some more DM tips for you. Until then, peace.